Hi, this is Ian Ray with Digilye, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to manage your WordPress website. This lesson is to teach you how to log in to the backend administration interface for WordPress. To go here, all you simply do is go to your domain name, in this case we have gerardbrewer.com, and we'll type wp-admin at the end. This will redirect us to the login page where we can log in to our WordPress administration. Now the dashboard gives you an overview of everything you can edit and manage for your WordPress website. Here you can actually customize this, move elements around by clicking on it, you'll see the little cross arrow shows up and you can drag the box wherever you want it to be so you can customize your dashboard as you want to use it. So the quick press we can quickly publish a post or an article to our blog. Uh, recent drafts, we can go through all of our different options here on the dashboard. And then on the left side, we have all our different modules. We have a post module, media, links, pages, comments, appearance, plugins, users, and tools. And then, and then finally, we have settings, which controls uh, all the master settings for the blog. Now, each of these elements I'll go through individually. Dashboard again, as you saw, is this home page right here when you log in, which is completely customizable to your liking. Ask him at stats. This is a plugin that uh, deletes and uh, finds spam posts on your blog. You know, what you want to do is actually just uh, have those set up automatically if, you, if you're using this plugin. But the reason it shows here is the function of the plugin to show here the stats right below there. Uh, many plugins will include different uh, menu modules here on the left side, including an events calendar, which I've seen show up here underneath the bottom. Again, all of the plugins will have uh, manuals and directions on how to use those individual models if they're not shown here. Posts, again, as shown in our other video, this controls all the posts on your website. Now I'm going to click View Site in a Node tab so I can show you a, a post if you haven't seen the video yet. A post is an inline item or an article that you post on your blog, which is different from a page which is more static and uh, descriptive about maybe a product or service you're offering or general company information. So, we have our post module, we have our media module. This controls our media library. Our media library is all the images and videos and content, aside from text that we've uploaded to our website that you, that you might have used in a post or want to use in a post or a page on your WordPress website. Here we have, so the images we've uploaded automatically show in here, you can manage those media items in your media library. Now again, when you edit a post or a page, you have the option to upload the media directly into that post. If you want to upload it separately to use on several items or to send to a friend, you can hit add new media and it will give you the same options to upload the file. Simply select file and, and go through the wizard to upload it. Links module includes all the links found on your website. If you want to add additional links, to the side where your template controls these links, you can simply manage them here. Now here we have all our links in this link section. Again, it's dependent upon your template. Uh, most WordPress templates include a link section by default. If it's been disabled by design, you can disregard the link section completely. Pages. This, of course, uh, manages the pages which are inherently different from posts in that they are usually included in your navigation bar like in this template. We have about Gerard Brewer which is a page. I'm logged into the admin, you can see this little edit button here. It's usually not there for the end users. You don't have to worry about them editing your content. Our comments section, we see a red icon, as previously mentioned, highlighted. Now, so I can click on comments, and that'll take me over to the list of comments, as we saw, and I can approve that comment, mark it as spam, delete it, edit it, quick edit it, which edits it in this window, or I can hit reply and add another comment to this and reply directly to their comment. Uh, now, I don't want to approve it because it's just a test. I don't want to mark it as spam because it'll remember all these settings about this user and mark it as spam. Only do that if uh, it's actually something about Viagra Cialis or something that you don't want those people coming back for. If it's somebody that just said something uh, that you did not like and you want them to comment in the future, just simply delete it and it won't tag them as spam. So we just click delete, confirm, and it's gone. Now on our blog, it'll be removed. Uh, appearance. This controls the design of your website template. Now there's themes. You can install several themes and change and vary it. 
if you customize it, uh, remember to back those savings up because if they're ever written over in, a, in an upgrade, you will lose the, the extra customization. We have our default theme, classic, and a, and a different version. And we can just simply click on them and activate them if we want. Again, this is more for the advanced user, not recommended unless you know what you're doing as changing the theme and template will actually change the way your, your blog is controlled. And again, if you customize, like adding these custom headers up here, and you change the images or whatnot to match the template or have a company do it, and you activate it, it will mess up template. Now, of course, you can easily always revert back to the template by clicking on it and activating that one. This button right here, activate, activate, activate. So if you activate this one you don't like it, and you activate this one again, everything should be back to normal. Again, please consult uh, the website designer before making any of these changes. Um, plugins module. This controls all the extra plugins we installed for a website. Now, a uh, plugin for WordPress ha uh, gives added functionality that's not built into WordPress by default or extends that functionality by giving it some more use. Like this Ask Him at checks your comments against their web service for spam. So many people will submit this for spam and this keeps a running track of all that and it helps you manage it by removing a lot of spam that's put in there by default by people browsing the internet to try to get some SEO bonus points by posting their link on your blog. All in one SEO pack, this gives some extra SEO functionality. So again, we have a lot of different plugins. This multi-feed snap allows me to pull in RSS feeds directly into our website, like we have in this news section, which pulls in internet marketing news directly into the website through RSS to help keep the website updated with current content. Share this is the tools you're used to seeing on, on a lot of pages where you can click on it and you can use the share tools to push it to other social mediums. So again, all these plugins, which you can find throughout the internet, including the WordPress website, will give you additional functionality. Uh, users, this is uh, all the authors and all the logins for your WordPress website. If you want to manage users, add a user, give somebody the ability to post articles but not edit your website, you can add those uh, controls by simply adding a user. Now by default you should be logged in as the admin so you can control this, but if we want to add a new user, we click add new, use the wizard, fill out their information, and then you have the roles here. We can give them as a subscriber, which is the ability to view and post on your website, uh, such as comments. Administrator, uh, which gives them full access, just as we have right now. Editor, which would allow them to edit a lot of your website, including the template, but wouldn't necessarily give them the control to add a new user like an administrator would have. You have the author, which has the ability to make posts and possibly page to, uh, for your website. So they can post articles if you want to have many people posting for you. And then you have contributor, which will just come in and make edits. And again, all these roles have their own separate use. And you can assign various roles, and you can actually have multiple authors logging in and editing your website without fear of editing your template or controlling different users. Tools, we have different various tools. Again, these are mostly for the uh, website uh, administrator who will uh, need to either import or export if you're doing upgrades to your website. Generally, you will not have to use the tool section. Uh, if you need to refer to these, WordPress website has plenty of documentation on how to use these individual uh, options. Now finally we have the settings module which control uh, the general settings for your entire website such as the domain name preference, uh, tagline, the blog title that you want to have displayed. Again your template a lot of times will control this information so if you change it it'll change the tagline here throughout your entire website and in the title bars if they're displayed. Generally speaking most of these will be set up properly on your WordPress website however if you have preferences on how to uh, set up your website and you feel comfortable changing it, feel free to come to the settings section and make the appropriate changes. Again, all the documentation and explanations is either included within the WordPress administration or on their website, which you can access by going to the help section here in the drop down for documentation or support on their forums. That in a nutshell is the entire WordPress administration section. Again, each module has even more detail than what was displayed here. Uh, you will not need to use it for the most part unless you have advanced uh, settings that you feel comfortable changing. Now this is Ian Ray with Digital Eye.